हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर रविंद्र पाल टीचर एजुकेटर टुडे द टॉपिक इज स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन इज फर्स्ट एट क्लासेस इट इज एजुकेशन इन फर्स्ट एट क्लासेस और इट इज द प्राइमरी एंड अपर प्राइमरी एजुकेशन टुगेदर primary level is classes 1 to 5 and upper primary level is classes 6 to 8 so together it forms elementary level overall structure of education in india is 10 plus 2 plus 3 and we are following this system this uh, structure of education since 1975 76 prior to that we had Uh, five years of primary education and then middle education 6th 7th 8th and 9th 10th 11th as higher secondary this was uh, changed as per suggestions of kothari commission in 1964 65 so now we have 10 plus 2 plus 3 system where 10 is uh, five years of primary 3 years of upper primary and then 9th and 10th secondary plus 2 is 11th and 12th this is the structure now here we have included pre primary also that is prior to 6 years of age the child goes to pre primary classes uh, it is nursery or lkg and then UKG or KG. Here the student is prepared for the former school, given training in school readiness, and then comes the lower primary or classes one to five. This is a five duration. Age group is six years to eleven years. And in upper primary we have classes six to eight. It's a three years duration program. and the age group is 11 years to 14 years then comes secondary 9th and 10th 2 years program age group is 14 to 16 and then 16 to 18 years it is higher secondary or senior secondary again 2 years program so this is the structure of education in our country now since independence we are trying to achieve what we have mentioned in our constitutional provision that is free and compulsory education of to each and every child of our country up to the age of 14 and this constitution has been amended several times the 86th amendment act 2002 in which article 21a is there it states that we should provide free and compulsory education to all children in the age group 6 to 14 years as a fundamental right in such a manner as the state may by law determine means every child of age 6 to 14 years is entitled for free and compulsory education in a neighborhood school till completion of elementary education here compulsory education doesn't mean it's not compulsion to the parent it is compulsion to the government to the state government whatever government it is it is the obligation of the appropriate government to provide free elementary education on compulsory basis and ensure that their admission is compulsory in the school attendance is compulsory the school should motivate the child so that they attend the school and complete elementary education by every child in the 6 to 14 age group so compulsion is on the state government on the appropriate government not on the parents and free means that no child shall be liable to pay any kind of fee or charges or expenses which may prevent him or her from pursuing and completing 
elementary education. Even if a child has to spend money for conveyance, for transportation to the school, that money is again an obligation of the school, of the government, not parents. That should not be a deterrent for the child to attend the school. That is why many state governments, many, at many places, they have provided free bicycles to the uh, children so that they are able to reach the schools. So, either the school should be in the neighborhood so that the children are able to walk up to the school and if they are not able to provide school in the neighborhood, then they should make some provision like providing free bus service, providing free bicycles or whatever. The parent should not bear any expenses for the education of the child. So, this is the meaning of free over here. Pre-primary education. Unfortunately, there is no mention of pre-primary education in the constitution. It does not say anything about the children below the age of 6 years. It says 6 years to the age of 14. So, many people think that it is not compulsory. Yes, there is no compulsion. It includes nursery, lower kindergarten and upper kindergarten. And the age group that comes in this category is 3 to 5 years. And the enrollment as per the data of 2012 is just 58 percent. The curriculum is not defined and it should not be defined. But this education is very important. It is the first step towards entering the world of knowledge as well as a healthy and purposeful life. It helps the children become more independent and confident as well as it promotes all round development of the child. Children who have been to primary schools tend to learn more rapidly through an organized curriculum, learning aids and by interacting with other children. They learn how to sit in a formal environment. They learn how to interact with the peer group. They learn how to manage their things. The main purpose of primary, pre-primary education is to prepare children physically, emotionally, socially and mentally for formal schooling and to prevent poor performance and early dropout. Those students who do not attend pre-primary education classes, they feel it difficult to adjust in a formal school in class 1. They take time to adjust in the class. One more advantage of pre-primary education is in several families, the girls, especially the girls, elder to the young siblings, they are not sent to the school so that they sit at home and look after the younger siblings. So, if we send them to pre-primary education classes, then the elder girls of the families, they find time to attend schools. Curriculum at pre-primary is, as I said earlier, there is no formal curriculum. It's take, uh, the natural desire of the children to learn and make sense of the world around them is nourished here. Learning is as per child's interests and priorities. There is no compulsion. And children are allowed to explore, experiment and freely express themselves. The focus is not on three hours, though we are preparing the students for the formal system, but we are not forcing this formal education in pre-primary classes. Then the next step is lower primary education that is classes 1 to 5. 
the age group over here is 6 years to 11 years and enrollment at present is 100 percent. The purpose is development of basic skills of literacy and numeracy, study the environment in terms of physical and social phenomena, participation in activities which would develop productive skills, creative expression and habits of healthy living. The children of the age group of 6 to 11 years study in classes 1 to 5 in most of the states, but some of the states uh, this level primary level is uh, only uh, for classes 1 to 4, fifth is taken up to upper primary classes. The lower primary school curriculum is general education which covers basic subjects such as languages, reading, writing and then arithmetic, EVS. In EVS, uh, science, uh, social studies, health education, they are included. And uh, apart from these, they study art education, they study work experience, they study uh, other things like games and all, uh, they participate in games and all. The language of instruction at the lower primary level is mother tongue. If uh, it is a Hindi speaking area, then it is Hindi language. If it is a Telugu speaking area, then it is Telugu. Tamil speaking area, the Tamil. Punjabi speaking area, Punjabi. So, the mother tongue is basically the language of instruction. And this has been mentioned in uh, NCF 2005. It gives detailed guidelines of curriculum and teaching methods to be followed in primary school. Uh, then the next level comes upper primary education. Upper primary education is classes 6th, 7th and 8th. We have very limited upper primary schools in our country, very limited middle schools. Mostly we have primary schools or we have secondary schools and senior secondary schools. Age group of students in upper primary classes is 11 to 14 years. Enrollment is 91.28 percent. Objectives are to acquire the tools for formal learning namely literacy, numeracy and manual skills. To acquaint the habit of, to acquire the habits of cooperation, cooperative behavior within the family, school and community, to develop social responsibility by inculcating habits related to it, to appreciate the culture and lifestyle of the persons of other religions, regions and countries so that they are able to appreciate diversity in our country. Curriculum at uh, upper primary uh, level is, we follow three language formula. So, the students learn three languages at this stage. One is the language, their mother tongue. Second is uh, mostly Hindi because it is national language also. And third is English. Uh, in many schools, English is introduced uh, in, from class 1 only. But in most of the schools, it is uh, introduced in class 5. Other subjects include mathematics, science, social studies, art education, music and life skills. Again, the detailed guidelines are given in NCF 2005. Now, this is the basic structure for elementary education. Our constitution says that we have to provide education to all students up to the age of 14. That is good. But how these three classes, 6th, 7th, 8th are being treated at schools, that needs to be looked into. As I told you before, that most of the schools are either primary or secondary and senior secondary 
we have very few schools which are middle schools now when you go to a secondary school then the priority uh, is given to classes 9th and 10th because in 10th class they have board examination so that is very important class 9th is going to 10th class for board examination again this is very important 8th class gives get some importance but most ignored is class 6th now students of classes 6th 7th 8th class 6th is the time when a child enters adolescence so these 3 years are adolescent age crucial age where students need guidance they need answers to many of their questions but then there these classes are neglected so we need to do something to have more of middle schools where these three classes also get importance they get importance uh, for the teachers and they have a good curriculum and that is transacted well so this is the structure of education in our country we talk about structure of education in other countries also and we appreciate the education in finland and other such countries and then compare our country structurally there is no problem but then we need to have schools which are elementary schools not primary schools so that we give good attention to elementary classes so in this uh, topic we have uh, discussed the structure and how we want to meet uh, the promises that we have made to the society the universalization of education elementary education and then meet the constitutional provisions enshrined in the constitution of india so this uh, and how the curriculum uh, should be uh, transacted what is the curriculum what are the objectives all this we have discussed hope you liked it thank you